Field target rifles? What's that all about? Well, I've got the Air Arms Pro Target FT Field Target Rifle here. First time for me, let's give it a go. It's Catalonia here and um, on this channel we do a whole load of air rifle reviews as well as technology reviews as well so if you're not a subscriber please uh, hit that subscribe button leave me some comments down below but today as the intro said I've got a field target rifle now I've never played with field target rifles before it's always been the, the regular rifles like such as the uh, such as the caliber crickets and the BSAs and uh, you know the day states those sort of rifles here but um, one of my subscribers and thank you very much Jeff um, for lending me this rifle has uh, lent me one of his field target rifles now this is the air arms uh, pro target FT, FT standing for field target. Basically, it's a target rifle. It's designed for precise shooting out there. Now, I don't know too much about um, FT, and I'm sure I'm probably going to make some mistakes, and especially trying to find information about this particular rifle. It's pretty difficult out there, and yeah, it does weigh a bit. It's uh, yeah, that's why I've got it held on like this. It's a it's a heavy rifle, but um, yeah, it's a really nice rifle. So I've done a bit of research on this. And um, I've got some notes down here, so um, forgive me if I'm not looking directly at the camera. Um, and we'll see how we go with this. But from what I understand is that with Air Arms, they brought out originally a rifle called the RN10. And the RN10, the 10 stood for basically, it was a 10 meter target rifle. And it was a precise target rifle designed for competitions. Um, and then this air rifle itself, and this being the actual Air Arms Pro Target FT, was derived from that. And then future rifles that came out of there would have been the Air Arms EF2 uh, type of rifle, the field target rifle, and then up to the more modern ones such as the FTR range of rifles. So this is probably you know, from the RN10. This is you know one of the um, dedicated types of field target rifle. Now this came out in three different versions. Um, and it's sort of more from the R10 into the Pro Target. You had the Mark 1, the Mark 2, and the Mark 3. Obviously, the Mark 1 was the first one out there, and the regulator on it, and this is a regulated rifle, and of course, it's a PCP single shot, but the regulator on it and the cylinder on it, the regulator was a dark color on there, and it had a few issues with regulators on there. Then they switched with the Mark II version, which I believe this one is a Mark II, and it's really difficult to tell, because they do get bits swapped in and out of them, but I believe this is a Mark II. The Mark II then had a um, silver regulator, and they did some fixes, to it and changed it as well and then the Mark III came out and the Mark III basically did not have a shrouded barrel on it it had um, it had a free floating barrel so it didn't have this barrel clip on the front and it had a regulator that was silver that had seven grooves in it now it looks like this rifle is actually a Mark II that has had a Mark III regulator added into it you can tell by the grooves you know if we can just bring that to the camera you can see these grooves here on there but um yeah uh, it's difficult to tell because a lot of these rifles get changed they get bits taken off them they get upgraded as with quite a lot of people field target rifles they just modify them to their own desires and you never see two to like especially in the second hand market so yeah i'm pretty sure that this is a mark ii but if i'm wrong and you guys know please leave me some comments down below it's really difficult finding information on them so what is this all about well at the end of the day it is a dedicated rifle uh, for target shooting now it did come out in three different formats as well and let's see if I get this right you get the pro target version which is this one um, it was basically called the Air Arms Pro Target FT and it was a 177 field trials uh, target position target rifle 
And then you got the next one that was called the Tactical Hunter, and that was a 2-2 version, which was basically a hunting version of this rifle. And then what you then got was the just the pro, uh, you just got the pro target on its own. It didn't have the FT on the end, and that was basically a 10 meter rifle that was limited to six foot pounds. So it was sort of like harking back to the RN10 days on there. But yeah, this one is definitely as I'm looking at it, I'm pretty sure it's a Mark II Pro Target FT, obviously in 177. 177 being obviously a much flatter trajectory of the pellets and much faster flying pellets, so more accuracy, but obviously not as much hitting down power, but you do not need that in field trials on there. So let's just give you some information on this rifle, because of, yeah, this is aching my arm. It is a heavy, heavy rifle. Um, I'll leave as usual, I'll leave, um, I'll just move over here and just leave it down on the side here, but the length of this rifle is 45 and a quarter inches, so it's a fairly longish rifle, and it's weight, you know, it's difficult to tell, I'm not going to take the scope off on this, I've done some research, it's around the, the 9.7 pounds, so it is a hefty, hefty rifle, I'd say probably around the 10 pounds to be honest, you know, it is a good hefty rifle on that, and it does come with it, and certainly on this version, it has a a loafer, um, a wolfer um, barrel on it. It's in there, and it's. Um, I've had some, again some research, and it's one in 18 twists. 12 groove barrel. It's really, really a good barrel designed for that pinpoint accuracy in 177. So let's just take a look at this rifle and move around it all. I think the first thing, I want to take a look into this camera here and we'll just move it around. The focus is usually better. And just look at that stock. You can tell straight away that this is an absolutely beautiful stock. You know, the looks of it are gorgeous. You know, we've got in here, and I'm just going to put this over my shoulder because it is heavy. <laughs> is if we have a look on here, it's a, a fully laminated wooden stock, absolutely gorgeous, fully adjustable. So we can adjust the back up and down here. I believe there's a bit of tilt in it as well, 3D top. Then we've got a cheek guard that you can lift up and down on here. Um, and then when we start looking around at the scope rails, and I'll leave some pictures as well, but on the scope rails they have markings, um, graduations, numbering one, two, three in inches, so you can put your scope precisely where you want it. On the bottom there's graduations here in the accessory rail, so you can put all your accessories, you know. So it's like a ruler etched into everything. It is designed to be set up absolutely perfectly to the shooter, to absolute position on there. So let's just move around it all again. So we've got the butt up the back here, and you will find a lot of these FT rifles, they will put aftermarket butt stocks on here, skeleton style stocks that they can completely change to whatever shape they want. And we come all the way up, and then we come to the absolute magic of this rifle. And the magic of this rifle is this trigger. This trigger is probably, it's just, it's a work of art, it's just engineering. This trigger, you can adjust it in seven different ways on how you want that trigger, all the way down, and I'll leave some pictures, all the way down to the angle that you actually put the trigger blade at. Obviously it's a fully adjustable two stage, you can set it absolutely any way you want. And the trigger on this is remarkably light, so light. Let me just give you an example. Now this is a single shot rifle, um, and what we do is I'm just going to cock the rifle here, and put it together, and just look at this second stage trip first. Uh, this trigger here. I'm just going to pull. There's a very, very just. Oh, I just feel that first stage, and literally just breathe on it. Boom! It just goes. There's nothing to it. Now, obviously, you can change the pull on that how you want, but ah, oh, it is an absolute sublime trigger. You just look at it, and it just goes. It goes. So you've got to be extremely careful. But that just gives you that preciseness of shooting. So again, let's just move down. So we've got the trigger here. Like we said, it's fully, fully, fully adjustable. You can change pretty much anything you want. Full metal guard on here. Um, obviously we've got a thumbs forward, you can do a thumb up on it as well, not too bad at all. And then we come up to the top and we've got this stock, uh, at the top here we've got the mechanism itself, um, the block. Now on top there is a standard 11mm dovetail on here, um, and this dovetail is a bridge over the actual cocking mechanism itself. Um, it's fairly long and it's got ruler markings on it as well, and it is actually angled from the back 
forward by about 0.7 of a degree I've read and that is so that you can put really big field target scopes on there and still not have to shim the back of your scoper so it's deliberately pointing scopes forward for that particular reason and the scope that's on mounted on this is a beast of a scope um, this is a Nico Sterling and it's a 50 times zoom and of course you can see that you've got the parallax wheel on here uh, absolutely beautifully matched up with this and then we move along then to the actual mechanism itself and again I'll leave some pictures here but basically what we've got here is we have on both sides we have the actual release for the bolt now like I said this is a single shot rifle it's meant for precision shooting you pull that lever down and the bolt will come forward and then on both sides, there's actually a, a handle on both sides, but you pull it back until you feel it lock, and then you put your pellet in, and then you push it forward, and those little levers will then pop up, and then we're ready to shoot, and then away it goes. You can then release the bolt by just pulling one down on one of these levers here. Now, I'm just gonna hold the bolt so it doesn't fly back, but you just push down on here, and it'll just slide back, and then you can pull it back again, feed your pellet in, put the bolt forward again, and fire. That's how the, the mechanism works with the rifle. And again, I'll leave some close-up pictures so that you can see that. There is no safety on this rifle whatsoever. Um, basically, you pull back the bolt, you put your pellet in, you put it forward, the rifle is live, and away you go. Um, and that's how it works. It's very, very simple. We've got the scope rail on the top, and then we have the regulator here. And like I said, the regulators, you know, you will find that if you can luckily get hold of one of these rifles, because they're getting hard to get hold of, what you really want to try and do is get at least a Mark III regulator. And you can tell that because it's going to be silver and these grooves in here, there should be seven grooves. Um, so that gives you, that's the regulator for the rifle. So obviously it's a regulated rifle, giving it a really good flat power curve. Underneath there, then we have the air cylinder. Now, the air cylinder will hold up to 200 bars, and in 177 in the FT version, 12 foot pound, you're looking 60 to 65 shots before you fill it up. On the front, you should see on the front here, um, if we open it up, and we'll just open this up here, is that you can get a fill port on the front here. So the Mark 1s did not have this fill port. The tube, I think you took the tube off and filled it up separately. But on the Mark 2s and the Mark 3s, then you have a fill port that goes over the end of that. There is no gauge on this rifle either, so you do have to sort of like keep an ear out on your shot count, you know, count out. And there's the fill probe itself. It's a big, huge, you can see it's one of the old, early day um, air arms type of fill probes on there. So that's your fill probe going across there. Now let's just bring across this camera there, and we've got the barrel that's across. So we can see on the barrel here, we actually have a clip. Now on the Mark 1s and the Mark 2s, this clip is there. On the Mark 3s, the clip isn't there at all. And on the Mark 1s and 2s, this barrel is shrouded with a built-in uh, muffler on the end on there, um, muzzle brake, whatever you want to call it on there. The Mark 3s do not have this uh, shroud on the barrel and the barrel is completely free floating on there. Now, like I said, this is in the 177. You can get it in, in the uh, Tactical Hunter of 2.2. Now, if you want to fit an aftermarket silencer on here, it's not an easy job. There's no standard attachments. You do need to get some specialists to uh, sort that out for you to put a silencer on there. It might be slightly different on the Mark III's. And then underneath, we've got the stock here. And underneath, you can see this is an old style. There's no like picatinny or anything. This is basically a groove style accessory rail. And you'll find a lot of these rifles will have handholds underneath them. You know, the field target guys love to do all sorts of wonderful things with these. And in the video, you may have seen that this big metal plate was on the bottom of the rifle. And this was because of the owner of this rifle actually bench shoots this out of a stable metal bench rest. And that's what he uses to actually do that. I left it on for the shooting um, and I've taken it off for the review just so you can see here. But um, yeah, that's how they used to do it in those days. Um, and basically it means that all you've got to do is you can fit pretty much anything you want into there. And then pretty much that's it. If we move around the rifle, you know, on the other side, it's pretty much the same. So it's fully ambidextrous. So you can change this hand how you want to change it. But basically you can see that we've got the bolt release here as well on this side, um, exactly the same. Everything's the same with it as well. 
So it is an absolutely gorgeous, gorgeous rifle. The looks on it are fantastic. It is a heavy beast. But you know, when, it, when you've got this weight in here and you're doing precision target shooting at 177, 12 foot pound, and your single pellet feeling, so you're making sure the pellets are good, um, and then you feed them in, there's no jamming the magazines or just trying to ram them home for a magazine. It is supposed to make for a really, really accurate rifle. So how good is it? Well, I don't know. I've got a lot of hopes out for this. So what I do as usual is we'll take it outside. Um, we'll do our usual shooting at 25 meters. I'm not gonna weigh any pellets. I'm gonna just go check that the pellets are fine. Make sure they're not deformed. I will try a, a few different types of pellet and then we'll see how we do and we'll come back. But um, I've got high hopes for this. It's, absolutely stunning 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 rifle a bit old yeah 15 plus years old but can it still compete we'll soon find out okay so we're outside we've got a lovely day a little bit of a breeze uh, we're going to put the AA Pro Feel uh, Pro Target FT um, through its paces at 25 meters I'm going to use four sets of pellets I've got some obviously they're all 177 I've got some Kaisers I've got some um, JSB Exacts some AA Field Diablos, and they've even got some JSB Flatheads, um, obviously all in 177. The pellets themselves, um, all I've done is take them out of the tin, check that they're not deformed. Uh, there's no weighing, there's no sorting. If you're doing this sort of work with a, uh, with a bench rest system, trust me, you'll be doing all that. But I'm not going to, I'm just going to give it a go and see what it's like. We've got a camera down range as well. Now, I've got a load of cushions here because I do not have a bench rest station to put this on with the full metal block or anything like that. So my results are not going to be brilliant and I'm not a great shot either. But we'll give it a go and we'll see how we get on with it and uh, we'll see what happens. These are the Kaisers. Trigger is so light on this. Okay, now onto the JSB exacts. Those Kaisers look pretty good. Okay, now onto the AA uh, field sports. AAs. Now onto the tricky flatheads. They're really tricky to load because they're flat-headed so they don't sort of glide in. See what these are like. Been a bit wild that one. See how we've done, but those Diablos AAs they look pretty damn good. So, how did we get on? Well, yeah, let's have a look what we got at the top here. So, this one here is the Kaisers. Um, I don't think I'll put it to one side. The Kaisers, it's about two pallet widths. Uh, then we've got the JSBs, not so great, but I think I pulled a couple of those shots. Down at the bottom, we've got the Diablo Field Sports. That is just as good as the Kaisers. You know, we're talking a two pallet width, if that. Basically, it's just where the paper's ripped around, where the pallet's gone in. And you gotta remember, these are 177. And then, to be expected, yeah, the paper punchers, they're a big flat head moving through the air. They're gonna twist and everything like that. I have actually played a little bit better, and I have got better than that. Um, but obviously, they're not gonna be as good as your um, more pointy, rounded pellets. But, um, yeah, certainly in an incapable hands, me. I'm not even using the right kit, I'm using cushions here. This thing is meant to be bench rested, put on, clamped down properly. It is, yeah, it's 
one of the most accurate rifles but the weight of it and everything i'm not surprised you know it is made to be a bench resting static um target re rifle for competitions but um yeah pretty impressed with that so we're back inside how did i get on well i have actually put quite a lot of shots through this rifle to get used to it it's got a lot of weight behind it um, and it makes it a really stable platform and with that 50 times zoom scope at 25 meters it was overkill so i dialed it right back down i took my time and got used to it but i you know i was started off these were i'm not joking these were my first shots uh, that I did with it um, and that was just me just messing around getting used to the rifle getting used to that trigger such a s nice nice trigger getting used to it anyway after about a hundred or so shots I thought right let's give this a go and you've seen this is the one that you would have seen the video of so we've got uh, Kaisers and JSBs at the top which if I can remember rightly let's have a look and again I'll leave a picture where we've got the Kaisers and the JSBs up here um, that's not bad grouping but it's not brilliant is it absolutely not for fun i put some flats through it <laughs> and so yeah yeah they went all over the place <clears throat> but then i stuck some aa diablos through it 177 aa diablos let me just bring that into the camera you know see if we can get that to focus look at that now again i'll leave a picture but that is five shots through a one and a half diameter 177 pellet at 25 meters and this is my first time playing. It's my first time even touching an FT type, field target type of rifle. Never played with one before. So I am just blown away. That is the best shooting I have ever, ever done. So, so the Air Arms Pro Target FT. Yes, it's an old rifle. Yes, these things have moved on so much more with the EV2 and the FTR ranges and whatever else that they brought out. I'm no expert in this area of field targeting. It was just that I've got a rifle that somebody let me have a play with and do a quick review on and I thought, why not? Let's give it a go. I tell you what, it's really, really addictive field target. Um, uh, really, really addictive. It's that precision that you after, that perfection. And yeah, I, I, I might be looking at doing it myself on there, but um, I'm just super, super, super impressed. The build quality of this is fantastic. I've even heard of people taking the stocks off these rifles and putting them onto other air arms rifles as well because they love the stock so much. And I can see why. They're really, really, really nice stocks. And like I said, the build quality on them is fantastic. Now these rifles are becoming harder and harder to find, obviously because they're older. So you're looking to get one of these. They're not too bad priced if you can find one, but you're looking anywhere from the 400 pound mark all the way up to the six, seven, eight hundred pound mark, depending on the version you get, the quality, and your country, whether or not they're available uh, to get on there. So, what do I, what do I really think about this rifle? Let's be, let's be useful. Let's be honest. This is what I'm trying to say here, because you know what I'm like. I'm raving about it. I am. So let's do some pros on this rifle. Well, it's quite simple. The build quality and the accuracy of this rifle is. Brilliant, absolutely brilliant. I have never been able to shoot anything like that. But then I've never played with a field target rifle, and this is my first one that I've ever played with. But the accuracy, 25 shots, uh, sorry, 25 meters, five shots in a diameter and a half of a 177 pellet, I've never been able to shoot like that before. The scope obviously helped on there, but it's the rifle, the stable, the weight, the solid platform, that certainly allowed me to do that. The stock is just gorgeous. All right, it might not be a modern day looking stock, but just look at that. It is an absolutely, let's bring it over to this camera, absolutely beautiful, wonderful, wonderful stock on it. The looks, I just think the looks of it, it just, it just screams quality. It's like, look at me, come and play, have a shoot with me, settle down. You know, sh let me show you how good I can shoot. It's got that sort of looks on it. Match it with a really big scope like this. It looks the absolute business. The adjustability of the stock as well. You know, the way that you can change it all. You can see how modern stuff has now der derived from this type of thing from about 15 or so years ago. It's just nice. The adjustability, the trigger, the way you can adjust the trigger to how you want it, how the angle you want it. The, all the way from the butt plate to the cheek rest, everything. It's so adjustable and then obviously you can then start fitting whatever you want underneath it all on here. 
and it's just a, a single pellet load as well. A lot of people love the single pellet load, is that you, you're not trying to force pellets into a magazine with friction or anything like that. You can take your pre-weighed pellets out, your pre-sorted pellets, you can feel and make sure you can push them into the breech and you can check that they're seated right however you want. There's no damage going to happen there and then you can slide that bolt forward and just pull that trigger and you know you're going to get good shot after good shot with good pellets. So that is another pro. Some of the cons with the rifle. Well, straight one, the elephant in the room and my arm is killing me is the weight. It is a heavy, heavy rifle. I certainly cannot be holding this up for any prolonged period of time. You certainly need to get a bit of use to some weight, get some muscle in that supporting arm to get used to it. But it does feel surprisingly balanced. There is a lot of weight down on this part, but it feels surprisingly balanced on there. And of course, with a lot of practice, you can get used to that as well on there. But the weight is definitely a big issue with this rifle. The availability and the spares for this rifle, you know, the, the seals, you know, you need to look, check the seals with these a lot. Um, and of course they're getting, as they stop being made, they're becoming rarer and rarer to find and then it's harder and harder to look after them. And of course the availability, can you actually find one? Can you actually get one in the country where you are? Now in the UK I've seen quite a few of these on the for sale ads. Um, most of them obviously are finished but you know, they're still difficult to get hold of. And one other drawback, well, again, it's back to the single pallets thing. You know, some people don't like single loading. But at the end of the day, they're not field target shooters. And maybe I'm talking out of term here because I'm not either. But I can see the reasons why people like that. I can also see the downsides because it is quite difficult with a 177 pallet to feed it into that little slot in there, get it right without damaging the pellet, bring it forward and then to fire off the action. It is actually quite difficult, but I'm sure you get used to it all. But yeah, I'm yeah. This is my first field target rifle that I've ever shot, ever played with, and it's an old one. I can imagine what the newer ones are like nowadays. I must try and get hold of one, and or actually go and join a club and have a play because I think I might be hooked on it. To be honest, on there. So would I recommend this rifle? Um, to a beginner, definitely not, no. It is far too heavy, far too light a trigger, far too specialised for a beginner. But for somebody who is really into their rifle, a collector or, or anyone like that, then yes, I would. You know, if you can find one, if you can pick one of these bad guys up for fairly cheap price, or you just want one, and it's a bit of history, um, yeah, definitely go and get one. They're absolutely gorgeous, gorgeous rifles. So, hopefully you like this review. Um, like I said, I am no expert in field target rifles at all. This is, I, this is just an off chance that somebody lent this to me along with um, an FX Wildcat. So I thought I'd take this as well and give it a go and I'm seriously impressed. But do you have one of these? Can you tell me if this is a Mark I, a Mark II? I know it's not a Mark III. Can you tell me if I'm correct about the fact that it's a Mark III regulator in there? Can you correct me about the fact that I'm saying it's an R10 that then moved into a Pro Target, that moved into the EV2s and then into the FTR ranges? Any info you can give, because it's really difficult to get this information, please leave it down in the comments down below. Don't forget to subscribe and, like I said, leave the comments thumbs up and thumbs down. And and also, if you're not a subscriber, check out the links that I'm leaving so that you can hit there to subscribe as well. And I'll leave some other videos up there, re uh, reviews that you might find interesting. But anyway, I've been Catanonia. This has been my first time with a field target rifle. Super, super impressed with it. It's a shame I've got to give it back, but I'll catch you on the next video. Goodbye.